We're live. Hello, hello, and welcome on into another Monday Live with the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. I'm Sarah. And I'm Matt. Today we are joined by Chad and Sarah from It's Bourbon Night, uh, a wonderful YouTube channel. If you've not checked them out, please head on over and like and subscribe to that channel as well. Uh, Matt, who's in the chat with us before we uh, let our <clears throat> guest take it over a little bit? Okay, so we got, let's see, Donald Rands, Linux Cat, Jason the Mastin Drum, uh, Brian Brennicky, Robot Scott, Will Henderson, Arthur Lopez, Emily Chambers, Steve A., Ben Stahl. Uh, let's see here. Dram Band, thank you, ma'am. Brett, Mark, I don't know how you pronounce that last name, Mark Herd, Mark, I don't know. Uh, Andrew Sparrell, let's see here. Ice House, Andrew Norris, Trey Koontz. Mark JG, let's see, Mike Myers, Wheels, Zeb Taylor. Hopefully didn't miss anybody at this point. There's lots of going, of course not go so freaking fast, but you know, <laughs> whatever. You, you guys are well familiar with this. Uh, so oh, here we got some more. Uh, How do you whiskey, Graham Young, Josh Galladay, which is another great channel, uh, oh, Whiskey good. Life, William Devilar, Travis Wallard, the patron state of Iowa whiskey, and Eric Evanson. <laughs> so, so I guess we asked you guys last year at the uh, initial opening, the Crowded Barrel, and uh, talked to you a lot and sent, I guess, lots of fun samples. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. and also, uh, I think you can thank you guys a lot for the vast improvement in the, lately in the channel. A lot of help from Chad, asking him 10,000 questions. <laughs> Thankfully, he's answered lots of them. So, we really it's appreciate that. Lighting. It's helped us out with uh, camera angles and all sorts of fun stuff. So, yeah, thank you. I know initially I asked Sarah tons of questions too. So, you both have been no super helpful Absolutely. to us and making all this happen. So, thank you guys very much. And I guess take it away. Uh, you. <laughs> You're up, Chad. <laughs> uh, hey, what's we're up? It's Bourbon Night. Yeah, we're, we're It's Bourbon Night. Hello. Um, that's Chad. I'm Sarah. That's our normal thing. That's that's how we <laughs> normally do the uh, do the intro. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. Um, we've got a prefola of, yeah, okay. of modern <laughs> Kentucky whiskeys in front of us. And uh, actually a lot of the samples uh, come from you, Matt. Yes. Yeah. Um, Some so of them are probably almost what a year and a half old at least at this point. Yeah. We've been waiting for this special moment. We exactly. And uh, also a lot of them, we have to give a shout out to Adam Nelson. Um, we're, we're cracking into a large assortment of samples that he gave us as well. Fantastic. Right. Yeah. And right now we poured some Bell Mead, uh, single barrel. It's a nine year. It's 110.1 proof. Mm -hmm. I doubt that you guys have that exact one. I don't have that one, but I do have the Bell Mead cast strength reserve. So a little hot. Oh, okay. 58.05. A non-Kentucky, but something we're a bit familiar with because we love yes. the, uh, cast strength too. Yeah, we thought this would be a good start because I feel like it's got a lot of Kentucky flavors. Yeah. Totally yeah. Agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dip a toe in, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of, one of my favorites. Well. Thanks for having us on. So cheers. Thanks for coming. Cheers. Cheers. It's been a long time coming. Mm. Yeah, we can, I guess, you guys, you guys can thank Carl for get, turning you guys onto this one for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's true. It literally <laughs> directly thank Carl. Yeah, it's been MIA lately in general, though. The first <laughs> Bastards Ball, the La Quinta, is when he introduced it to me. Yep. Same. I think someone paid him to just go spread the gospel. <laughs> of the they should have paid him yeah. <laughs> for all that. He definitely turned a lot of people onto it that week. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. he had the non-cast drink before right that. so we had been yeah. to like another tasting event where they did the um uh, barrel finished one so the cognac uh the madeira and the uh, sherry yeah and uh i we were like all right with them i don't think i was wild about any of them yeah i wouldn't say that we had written off bell meat or anything like that but it just wasn't as high up on our list of things to get excited about until we had that cast strength and then it just went right to the top of the list so it was mm -hmm. like, Totally agree. Yeah, the is by far their best. Yeah. Mm. You really can't beat it, especially for. Um, I mean, I know they were made what MGP. I guess eventually it would be in house for them, sure. but not quite yet. Have you tried the Nelson's Green Bar their own stuff at all? Have you tried any of that at all yet? Um, I have not had the chance. <laughs> I haven't even seen it. Um, 
Yeah, we had a guy go to the distillery. Stuff, though, which doesn't really make sense. Um, I think I think Todd Cooper had that. You know what? You might be right. That whole weekend blur. Matt, have a, Matt, they have a separate name for their own product, right? Yes. They're not calling it Bell Mead, right? No, yeah, no. I think that's correct. Yeah, it's stuff that they actually made. Yeah, Nelson Greenbrier has their own stuff now. It's from we somebody brought us one from the distillery. It's not bad. It's not great. Giving us a sample. Maybe your yeah. episode yesterday, Chad, uh, Sarah, have got me thinking a lot about brands that do that. That that go from sourcing to their own juice and how they, whether change or not, up. whether or not they're going to change the label, whether or not they're going to change and actually let their consumers know this is going to be different or whether or not they're going to play the game of let's just try to get away with it. So, yeah, I mean, I think that we're at a point in time where the majority of the consumers are at least aware enough to know what this doesn't taste like the one I just had before, or like the one I've been drinking for a few years, that's not the same. And I don't right. think that people will appreciate there not being that transparency. So like we talked about yesterday, I think new riff did an excellent job of being like, you know what? A lot of people are going to be upset that we're going to go do away with OKI, but we we're not going to be able to put that same product out and we're not going to ruin the reputation that we built. Um, I think that's huge. I mean, all it takes is a year's worth of people having a bad experience with whatever yep. you change to for it to kill everything that you built. Yep. Transparency is the key. It really is. Yep. In fairness. I had an eight year OKI and I actually like the new riff better than that eight year. <laughs> <laughs> totally fair. Yeah. I think they're doing a great job. Yeah. Totally. So it'll be interesting to see how other distilleries as a lot of them are starting to come of age. With yeah, I mean, how they treat it. Mm -hmm. the, the crowd of barrels is going to be one of the biggest examples when we get to try. I mean, we've tried some of their, you know, new make or whatever, and it's really good. But mm -hmm. I guess we'll see what we get here in a couple of years. What comes out yeah. of that? I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Sure. I don't really yep. have any doubt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, some of the distilleries that are now doing putting stuff out and they're doing things as limited releases. So every time they put out bottles, it's a limited release. So people have come to expect that this one will be different from the last one, which was different from the one before that. I think they've set themselves up for success because they can put out their own, like their own distillate and people aren't going to necessarily be comparing it directly to the one before. Cause it's, they've already set you up that it's not the same. True. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very true, which is good for the most part. Yeah. It will be interesting to see like Sagamore, you know, I think they did their own mash, but with MGP and now they're, own stuff won't be out till next year, but they, they did put a little bit distillery only two and a half year out. So it'll be interesting to compare when their four year actually comes out next year to see how it actually compares to the MGP stuff that they put their own mash bill together to make for them. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It'll be interesting for sure. But yeah, we do love this stuff. This stuff is fantastic. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, we're going to start with high proof. I say we go to like Balcones bourbon then at that point. Okay. But of course, as we know, being from Texas, one of my freaking loves for sure is Balcones. And you go for blue corn bourbon first? Yeah, I do the blue corn bourbon first. Blue corn. Yeah, it's this bad boy. It's, oh, we've got blue corn and true blue. Oh, that's yes. Cool. We'll do both of them. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I think we'll do the, the bourbon first since we just did a bourbon. It comes in at 64.6%. So the sucker's going to be hot, but it is 100% uh, blue corn. Ooh. Yeah, one twenty nine point two. That's what ours yeah. said anyway. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's when I wrote them out for you. I think I put because uh, one twenty nine point two sounds so much fun, more fun than sixty four point six. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You say sixty four points, and I'm like, and my mind is already like, okay. And if you carry that over, it's one twenty nine point two. <laughs> yeah, this is my favorite one of it's theirs. Such great color. It mm. is. It's only thirty months old, which is amazing. Which is incredible. Yeah, I mean, so because like I found this one, I think this one from yeah from 2017, and I buried it in my office on purpose so I wouldn't drink it all. <laughs> it's like a 10 anniversary. It's good, but nowhere near as good as this one. So I'm gonna just see what you guys' thoughts are on this one. This is your first time having this one, right? That's true. Well, I'm sure we we had it at the Bastards Ball, more than likely. Right, but we literally set a timer on ourselves and said, how many of these booths can we get to? So I would mm -hmm. say it was the most fair tasting. Right, right? yeah. That it's is heavy cool. grain corn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus, you got to think about how many other whiskeys you'd had 
mm-hmm. by the time you might have gotten there. Oh, totally. That's why I never go <laughs> solely based off of what we like. We film at events, and usually that's my only way to remember. Like, oh yeah, I did have that. Yep. But I'll never yeah. be like, oh, I tried this at an event and I hated it. You should never try it because I don't trust myself. <laughs> or either. we tried an event and we loved it. It's my new favorite. <laughs> oh, and then yeah. you go buy a bottle and you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me watch the playback real fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's the worst when you really like something mm-hmm. at an event and then it goes back and it's not the same. That's it's just not like whatever. Right. Mm, I do. Mm-hmm. This is so like perfumey in a good way. Yeah, it's very perfumey for sure. I want to give our shout out to Brian's in here from Pit Face Barbecue too, who's our mate. So actually we're hoping that Brian's actually gonna get to come with us this year to the Bastards Ball and yeah. actually bring his barbecue to the La Quinta for us. Mm. Which is freak his barbecue is freaking awesome. Nice. So uh, speaking of his barbecue, uh Brian test number two with the uh, spicy meat rub was a massive success. This mm. is have an open again. Possibly better than the on point. <laughs> and the kitty really wants some. I forgot that they do bacon and I totally would have made bacon. They said it was in the email. Was it? <laughs> uh, I'm too busy to read. Next time. You know, that <laughs> <was> words. <so. laughs> too busy. <laughs> Hey there, and missed out on bacon. Just click links. Yeah, no bacon for you then. Yeah. <laughs> we'll start sending bacon in the uh, snapple boxes with the whiskeys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Seriously, so, really. Overnight it. Vacuum seal them or something and send yeah, it. Yeah, nice. Mm. I like that. This has got a lot of flavor. It's got um, it's got sort of a t- tobacco. It does. Absolutely. Going on it, yeah. Gosh. The, and, and almost like a um, a leather, but not like a leather that you get from age. But there is that like oh, I see what you're saying. Saddlebag type of quality. Yeah, I, would, I would even say like new leather. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. The, the like, deepness and richness of it. Yeah, it's like the leather you just got polished for your like a sofa couch or something that's mm. brand new. Yeah. There's, Ed from the Rocket Review. Good to see you, Ed. Thanks for coming. And you really get a lot of like the richness of the wood too, mm-hmm. right? Which is again just speaks to like how insane it is that you can get that. At, how old did you say? Thirty months. Thirty months. Thirty months. Yeah. So two and a half years. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I wonder if that's a little bit of that leather though. Mm-hmm. Is that youngness? Mm. Yeah. Could be. Could be. I just know it's good. It is yummy. Well, Matt, you said this is a 2017 bottling. Yes. Okay, so they were still using uh, 15 gallons in 2017, correct? I'm not sure. Josh Galladay is in here. Josh, do you know? What Give it up, Josh. Size they were using. <laughs> it's going to be Josh. Kind of ashy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It this, could be a smaller barrel then. This tastes yeah. to me like it's probably a smaller barrel release. Yeah, I don't know if they were quite at 53s uh, in 17. Probably not. They are now, but I'm not, not sure. They are now. They release stuff. Yeah, yeah, but I'm guessing that won't be out for at least thirty months. Yeah, <laughs> it could have been the five gallon. Oh, wow. well, it could have been a five. This is a five. This is freaking awesome! Wow, yeah. wow, yeah. From I'm not a particular we, yeah. believer in the smaller barrel sizes, but I. No, but I, I, I think, think some though. of that leather is coming from mm. some of that. Some of that brand new leather to me is coming from that tiny barrel in thirty months. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to move on to the uh, true blue cask strength because that is a corn whiskey that they aged in the used barrels. So let's see. Ah, here's the cask. All and right. while y'all are pouring that, uh, this is the pit faced barbecue spicy meat massage. I am not getting paid to endorse them. I <laughs> love their product and I want you to buy their product because I love it. Spicy meat massage. So, you guys give your famous. give your meat the rub it deserves. Mm. <laughs> That's the meat it deserves. The meat. Oh, I thought you just made that up on the spot. I was like, what? No, you should really look into being in marketing. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, that's, that's all, all Brian. Brian and his team. Yeah, you guys are like Brian. We, he hosted Booker's Night for us a couple of nights ago for all oh, the ones in 2019. I would like that. It was a really good night. 
Oh man, we need to do Booker's Night. Is that Booker's Night? night? It's, it's Booker's Night. It's Booker's Night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's awesome. You love it. it's all super nerd out on all the all he's got these charts and graphs and everything about it. It's, it's amazing. Oh yeah. Talk about whiskey nerdgasm. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I was like, you got to email that to me. I'm gonna need to <laughs> go over this in, in uh, <laughs> time. It's whiskey porn. <laughs> nice. Wow, that is a unique type of sweet. Because you guys have had, I think, probably the baby blue and the regular true blue 100. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so this is their daddy. Yeah, and this is a completely different beast than the other one as far as the wood component, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's super sweet, oh. super brown sugary. Yeah, definitely a lot more brown sugar caramel. Bet this would go well with bacon. Oh, mm -hmm. this would go well with that OBC bacon. Yeah, and the peanut butter. I, I was telling them about that earlier yeah. with the peanut butter yeah. dipping. And then we started talking about screwball, and then it just went downhill. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't want to talk about that. I feel like I got a, I feel like it's got its place somewhere. I just don't know where that is. Probably oh, in like a peanut butter mudslide. <laughs> that, that 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 but yeah. For breakfast. Maybe over some ice cream. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Not on its own. And not on bacon. Of course. <gasps> this one's what, like 136.6? <laughs> so, I mean, this is even higher than we just had. Ours is 128.4. Okay. Whoa. Very savory. So mm -hmm. savory. Yeah. Oh, man. I can get behind the new mommy character of this one for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's almost uh, oh. quite the mouthfeel. Yeah. Mm hmm. It is like kind of like a charred brown sugar bacon. It's a boozy syrup. It's what you always say. Mm. It'd be so, good on pancakes. So drunk charred breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's it's yeah. I mean, you know, you're having you're having <coughs> your pancakes and your bacon, and, and some of the bourbon. syrup gets on the bacon. Mm -hmm. Sort of like that. And then you add some bacon for your bourbon, all of your pancakes. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a good plan. Be the best breakfast ever to soak the pancakes right into it. <laughs> we actually did a bourbon over pancakes once with a bourbon maple syrup. It wasn't so bad, but I mean, <laughs> it'll still get you drunk. It, it's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I've never got drunk off pancakes before. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is there a better way to start your day? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a breakfast, literal breakfast of champions. Start your day yeah. with a. Morning nap afterwards. Yeah, yeah really. It's not even that think that's like lazy Sunday. Yeah, good. Lazy. That sounds good. Well, because someone had sent us the Woodenville um, barrel aged syrup, and we were like, "Oh, we'll put this on pancakes, and then let's just pour some Buffalo Trace on our table." It was uh, Tony. Tony sent it. Was that. nice. Mm -hmm. Does you guys have you guys had the Cedar Ridge mm -hmm. bourbon barrel uh, syrup at all? What's that now? We had the Cedar Ridge version of the bourbon barrel syrup. No. Um. No. That's really good. We're at an event where Whistle, uh, one of the people from Whistle Pig brought like the syrup that they make in house. They don't even sell it because oh, nice. they're in Vermont um, uh, and they don't even sell it because it's like, I guess, tough to make or whatever. Um, I wish I had never tried it. <laughs> it's good, huh? yeah, Nate from Whiskey with a View was like, Are you sure you want it? Because it'll change your life and I can't ever give you any more. And I was like, No, I got to try this. And immediately I was like, I take it back. It's ruined syrup for me. I'll never <laughs> do syrup the same way. You can never have pancakes again unless I have mm. this. No, oh, it was ridiculous. It was good. We do, speaking of Cedar Ridge, we do have their little three pack here. Okay. Are you really? Really? That was Travis Fuller, right? Yeah, yeah. I can grab some real quick. Travis, he was in the chat. Yeah. Yes, Travis is. I know two of them. <laughs> We've never tried the uh, the just the bourbon whiskey, the regular old small batch. That doesn't seem like what we do. We can do that for sure. There's hey, Travis right there. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, there he is. Yeah, Travis sent us the same no. cool three pack. So. Hmm. It's a good pop for a little bottle. Yeah. Which one was that? This is the bourbon. Oh, so we're gonna do that one. Good. Why not? You guys pull it out. Might as well. Might as well. I'm doing it. You put whiskey in front of. We're probably gonna pour something. I'm gonna pour it. This will be an interesting change of pace because this is 80 proof. Yeah, this is gonna be a pretty drastic change. We're just drinking. 
but that's okay. We'll go back to high proof in a few minutes. Cool. I mean, we don't have to do high proof all night. <laughs> but why wouldn't we if we could? Well, I mean, we have nothing to do besides go to bed after this. So. That's true. All right, let me see if I can match your cork pop. You mean <laughs> little, little cork pop challenge here. Ooh, that was good. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so good. I know how to pop them. I've, I've, I've. You, you got the sound of a science, I think, at this point. Yeah. Frog. Yeah, for that cork pop. See what Ed says. You need to do high proof for life. After what? High probably 150 life. or more uncorkings. Probably 200 that we filmed. Uh, you think I would I stop wincing when you open yeah. it? Like I'm gonna get popped in the I don't face. Oh, we're at 200 yet, but we are. At no, but I just mean like ones that we've uncorked on the live. Ones that we've oh, uncorked yeah, yeah, on the yeah, show. yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, huh? yeah. <laughs> I mean, at least it's not champagne. Then I then you might be concerned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here, let me just open this in your direction. Yeah. yeah. That will end poorly for you, Chad. I would not suggest doing that. No. <laughs> this smells apple-y to me. It does. And it almost has, you, you said champagne, and maybe you just put that in my head, but it almost has like the effervescence of- uh, That bright of, uh, sweetness. Yeah, bright sweetness. And Christmas. Christmas. Uh, Christmas. Christmas like a signature Cedar Ridge thing. Yeah, it does. It's got like an apple smell. Apple banana combo, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That area of Michigan is known for their apples and their cherries. It's not. Oh. Oh, no, it's that's a, different. Iowa. Iowa. Different. That's Sorry. Different. Sorry. This is Iowa. That, this was, is last that was last Monday. Okay. Okay. Getting my like, mixed up. Old. Orchard. Oh, there could be orchards there. Yeah. There could be. There could be. Maybe. Travis, are there orchards there? Travis, let us know. Have you seen an apple? <laughs> I know Travis, that Travis made me look good. Bark twice. You're everywhere. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I do like some Cedar Ridge. Mm -hmm. They definitely have a unique thing going on up there. But after coming off that Balconis, that was very, very light and uh very light, very true. light. I still think I still think it has like a it's apple apple. A hint of apple. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it definitely does. Yeah, on the fish, it's got like apple rinds for sure. Like so apple. apple from the other room. Yes. It's good. Mm. Swisher, Swisher, Iowa. Yeah, that's super light and easy to drink. I mean, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to need to queue up another one for like in two minutes because I'm going to be done with this. Yeah. <laughs> it's just going to be like, Whoop. what do you got? Well, we pour, we pour tiny, tiny pours so that, well, we also do Weagle and Karen's so that, you know. Oh, look at the Weagle and, look at the Weagle and Karen's. I gotta work in the morning, you know. Karen's. I do too, but I hate my job and don't care. <laughs> yeah, we're so, pretty small. Pretty but I'm small. confident all of you know it at this point. <laughs> yeah. It's not the first time you've mentioned it. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure pretty much everyone I talk to knows you that. brought it up. Several times. So do they watch the show or? <laughs> <laughs> don't care. <laughs> don't even care one bit. He's like, maybe one day they will, and I'll be fired. It'll be a glorious. <laughs> thing. Uh, the problem is, I do a really good job at my job. I just hate. We got bought out, and I I used to be like my family up there. Mm, and so when your work family like gets divorced and goes away, it's it's an unpleasant the sentiment. Thing. Changes, yeah. Yeah, and for the way worse, it's not good at all. So yeah, unfortunately, but it's okay. We have plans for whiskey that are be much more fun than this. Mm -hmm. Are you pulling out that tomatin? So the only scotch I I know that I sent you guys a while ago. It's a cast strength scotch. So I kind of wanted to know what you guys thought of it. With the sher a sherry cask? Yeah, well, it's it's a it's a bourbon <laughs> sherry cask, and it comes in at 115. Hmm. Yep, that's right. That math checks out. If you say so. I don't have my calculator. Okay. Ooh. So while we pour this, what are you all most excited for this year? What do you do? You all have anything coming up, or what are you most excited to attend or release it? Any Love releases? It. On your we have a lot coming up, actually. Uh, we've been invited to a couple of distilleries to um, actually have a day to distill there at the distillery, uh, which is really, really fun. Tal Wakero, uh, right here in Grapevine, has opened their doors to us and allowed us to uh, to come out and film and distill and make choices and Ooh. cuts yeah. and just basically have the run of the floor for the day. 
Yeah, they want uh, to with their help assisting, obviously. Uh, but uh, we're going to be able to actually put some stuff in a barrel and come back to it in a couple of years and see right, what happens. See what happens, and and you know that'll be basically our barrel. Uh, we also have Whiskey Psalm Level 2 coming up yeah. at the Ooh. end of May, and we're super excited to be going back to uh, Austin for that nice. to, nice. to learn a lot more. Um, and, of course, the ball again. Yeah. And then yeah. Beth Ball is uh, always a fun whiskey event to be uh, to go to. So, yeah. yeah. Those are my big three. The balls that are held for pleasure are the balls that I like best. Oh, my God. <laughs> Who's got big balls? You do uh <laughs> everyone knows that song. Yeah, everyone yeah. Knows it. oh. I mean, if you're gonna be talking about balls, you might as well sing about it. Yeah. You might as well. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow in my head I just knew you were gonna go there. It's like this weird intuition thing. I don't know. I think we've been around each other too, too much. Long. Yeah, yeah, too much. Just it's like, married so. intuition. There's yeah. nothing wrong with it. It kind of happens. He's gonna Ooh. do it. I mean, uh, he, he could say worse things. Oh, if, totally. Yeah. Remind Sorry. me the note, it's, Sarah. Remind me the note that you get with Sherry. Um. Okay. So it's pretty disgusting. Uh. But usually, like, <laughs> the most intense cherry flavored, uh, like barrel rested things, remind me of burning keratin. So, like, if you have ever smelled hair on fire, or if. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, you might know this. Like, if you file your fingernails really fast, oh, yeah, there's that weird smell, and it's like that. Like, if you use a metal file, yes, it smells very distinct, and it is what I pick up in some sherry finish things. So, like, we have a local distillery called Town Branch. They did a sherry finished. Uh, I think it was a nine year bourbon. Um, and as soon as I smelled it, I was like, "That's what it smells like." And ever since then. I have always been able to pick up at a least sherry. a little bit of that in anything sherry finish. I don't know why. Yeah, Josh uh, Galladay said sherry can get sulfury. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's what I'm reminded Sulfur. of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Oloroso um, and uh, Tinta, Tintafino can get ridiculously sulfur heavy, especially yeah. barrel aged things from those barrels. Do we know so, what this one's finished in? Uh, uh, Urban Urban it just says sherry. Yeah. Yeah. You know what kind of sherry, Matt? Oloroso. Oloroso. It smells like Oloroso. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say it kind of did. So I've That's liked really everything bad. from the Wild right. Turkey Master's Keep um, or Master, what is, is Master's it? Keep Master's collection. Keep Collection. Yeah. That's right. Um, except that one. That was my least favorite one. It's terrible. At the Oloroso. I, I was just like, mm, I just don't like. I generally don't like cherry finish. However, in scotch, I feel like those are some of the more approachable ones for me. I, agree. Mm -hmm. yeah, I find but most here. sherry are not good. But yeah. most scotches finished in sherry tend to be good. Sarah, I would say try to find ones that are finished in uh, Pedro Jimenez yeah. or PX. PX sherry is Ooh. better than the Oloroso to me. PX sherry is the sweetest of the sherries. And it's okay. the most grapey of the cherries, mm. right? Like it has the most... Rich, True grape red, or red berries, mm -hmm. yeah. just or dried raisin. If you could think of like oh, a raisin good. syrup, that's um, you're really selling it. Doesn't it sounds good. Mm -hmm. Joseph <laughs> Magnus have one that's finished in um, PX sherry casks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's finished in the PX and the it's cognac and, and cognac. Yep, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, finish. I like generally like cab finish uh, mm. bottles. Um, the ones that I've liked have been super grapey because I also love wine. So for me, it's like best of both worlds. I totally get though why some people are like, this is just ruining the bourbon. <laughs> if you don't like wine, I could see where yeah. you're coming from. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right. The Jefferson's Groff Cabernet. The Groff Cabernet yeah. just always reminds super me of, grape. it's just grapey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one is a lot of wine. There's no doubt. I do like that one though. The Pritchard Hill, less better. grape, but better overall flavor. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. Even though this is scotch, I still get a little bit of that. It's not bad. Flavor. Yeah. We'll call it sulfury from now on. Yeah. Which is probably an extra hair extra. and nails. <laughs> Disgusting. No, call it what you call it. There's nothing uh, to me. I mean, I I mean, I work as a psalm in a restaurant, so I I deal with people trying to give me descriptors all day long. Um, 
if you can put a word to it and you can yeah. come back to that word again, you are right. That's all that matters for that you. That is all that matters. So I, I say, if you're, if you found a word for it, call it that word. Uh, I can totally get behind what you're saying though. I, I can too. I just wanted to kind of, I wanted to put my nose in front of something Sherry mm -hmm. as we were having that conversation because I figured I could actually find it. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah, sure you can experience this with most things, but like, I feel like if it triggers, a smell that reminds me of something or somewhere I have the easiest time. Like if I can describe something I've eaten, like a meat, an actual meal versus just mm -hmm. like one note, I have an easier time making that connection versus. Yeah, absolutely. That's sometimes right. I know something I'm like, I, it's not reminding me of anything. So I'm having a hard time. Yeah. That's all knows mm -hmm. memory. So yeah. Smell, smell goes to memory first and then goes to your other parts of the faculties to try to figure out what it is. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Emily Chambers wants to know how you guys feel about the Madeira finish report. So we used to think that we just didn't like port finish because we weren't huge Angels Envy fans. Mm -hmm. But then we started having other bourbons finished in port barrels that we liked. And we're like, oh, maybe it's not the port. Maybe it's just Angels, Angels Envy. Envy. Uh, I mean, we have had Angels, Angels Envy, like the cast drink. Mm. Uh, that that we have enjoyed, but you know that particular it's a regular Angel's Envy. We're not too big on. So. Have Have you ever had um, those orange fluffy circus peanut candies mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that you always see at the gas station? You're like, why do they make these? Who know. buys these? Why I don't would they make them? But yeah. some of them. That's what Angel's Envy like smells like and tastes a little bit like to me. Like mm. those. So I, I always thought something about that is why I didn't like mm. port, but. Um, Madeira, I do like the Whistle Pig um, Old World Madeira finish. Mm. Yeah, that, that I enjoy. Yeah. Um, other than that, the only other Madeira I can think of that I've had was the Bell Mead. And I just remember feeling lukewarm about that. I'm trying to think what other port ones we like. Doesn't 1792 have a port? They do, but I don't think we liked their. I don't think do we, we went not? into that one. Okay. Oh, they're not a big fan of 1792 at all. No? No, it's all metallic to me. That it's hmm. very shiny. It's at the very, very top end of my register, and I can't. Hmm. I can't. I, I haven't found a bottle of 1792 that I can. It's very vanilla. Yeah, get past that really bright vanilla. Yeah, yeah. I say, I think oh. this the foolproof is my go-to with 1792, and hmm. honestly, the others I could, I could live without. Yeah, small batch is nothing to write home about. It's fine. It's. In a really pretty bottle that's probably costing, <laughs> making it cost ten dollars more than what it, it's actually. Yeah, but, yeah. The second rye finish port's good though. I like that one a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Someone had voted the foolproof the best whiskey of the year or something. I think. Yeah, it was Mary, wasn't, wasn't it? it? I was. I was. Well, yeah, you're right. Somebody. Did. I like foolproof, but I don't know if I'd go. I wouldn't go that yeah, far. Jim, Jim. No. Whiskey Bible seems a little extreme. I've had other better whiskeys, <laughs> just yeah. like uh, George Dickel 13 year bottle and bond was whiskey of the year, too, and also not high on that. It's funny that you say that. <laughs> yeah. We were just doing a poll trying to get our uh, annual award show done and about most divisive, and that, that one came up a few times, so yeah, I would say so. It's it's fine, it's, it's I good. mean, 35 bucks, it's fine. Right, but That's is it like best you had? Hell no, no, not yeah. even close. Did I spend a lot more than thirty-five dollars on the best I had? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why it's the best I've had. But is there better for half that price? Yes. 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 <laughs> Hell, I'd rather drink the number twelve than the thirteen year. To be real honest, hmm. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of that. All right, we got to move to some better whiskey at this point. Yeah, let's move right along. All right. Yeah, what you guys got? Um, this few rye. You done this one ever? We have not. We've got, we've got the uh, rye. Proof. Matt. I know, but I like it. They like rye. You don't have to drink it if you he doesn't want. want. <laughs> we are not big rye fans, and the older the rye, the better. Mm. But otherwise, it's just pickle. You might like this rye. This rye is totally. This is old style. You said that before. Wait, what did you say? It tastes like. Pickle. Pickle. That's so interesting that you say that because Chad is like number one. He needs a shirt that says number one pickle hater <laughs> and he likes rice. Public so enemy number one. Yeah. I don't, All right. Well, I think that's funny though. Chad, oh, we might we might have just ruined rye for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
If you look dill. for dill, don't look for pickle first, but actually look for the plant dill. Yeah, no, I, get, no, I, I can see dill. dill. Oh, no. That, I don't think that's... It's a really bright <laughs> note right up here at the top of my I nasal cavity. And and as soon as it hits me, I'm like, oh, I can't. I, I like pickles, mm, but I, I like them in my fridge by themselves. Right. Not or on my hamburger. Or on my burger. I'm not saying which. So I not my like glass. For you, the hang up with pickles is more on the vinegar, less on the dill. Because mm. mm. um, you also don't like olives, which are also very vinegary, I guess. Correct. Now, do you know, is this like a 95.5? Is this a barely legal? What's what's so, Yeah, this one's a barely legal. So they do it in the old style, pre-prohibition. This it's one's so like like Maryland style. So yeah, it's, it's a low, a low uh, rye. So this is the same as like Sagamore? No, yeah, same style, yes. Mm. Was, but this one's out of Chicago. See, and I'm not. I'd rather have my pikes. This smells, this smells more like 95.5 to me. I know, me, yeah, me too. Like dill to me. It does smell more like 95.5, right? I would put it at a higher rye content if I had to get. Yeah, when you compare it to their bourbon, though, yeah. you think they switched them. <laughs> Weird. So Let's it's see. like, because when I originally tasted them, I'm like, oh, this has got to be the rye, right? And like, no, this is actually the bourbon. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, this was one of the port finish things that we were yeah, talking about. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that yeah, that was really good. Like, we had something else port finish somewhat recently. Uh, I'm just going <laughs> to side by side so I can take, I know that they're about 10, what, they're 10 proof points apart, but. Yeah. I just want to compare because the fuse because not, science. It's not really doing it for me. Oh, remember what those do? The tables. Yes, I oh, do. Yeah, sure. the, yeah, yeah. the the diamond bottom. Yeah, yeah we got those little grooves on it too. Yeah, <laughs> it's a cool bottle. It's such a cool bottle. Yeah. Mm. We're gonna pour that same comparison oh. real quick. So the bottle's just right here behind us. Sorry, no contest. You like that one better? Sagamore. I do. I do like it better. I I can tell the difference oh. in the proof, but I oh, think I can tell the difference so well rounded. It's much more. Um, approachable it actually yeah it's just very it tastes more balanced it's more like it's more in the realm of like how a whistle pig rye tastes now i don't know, know exactly what to say that is but it, it's less on the dill <laughs> you know one of the reasons yeah. also is that that uh Sagamore is at least four years old. This thing's one year old. That's exactly right. oh, and see that's that probably crazy. has more to do with it than the mash bill. Yeah, the so, older so. to us, the less dill, and, and the more it transitions into a mint, mint note. spearmint. You know, I know. Yeah, I I do find that with like a lot of rye, and that's usually the, the extra minty ones are my least favorite. Yeah, um, yeah, you gotta find that happy median, right? Yeah. But you know, like, you might have like a drink that uses mint. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. My favorites are still the Black Prince and Booker's. Uh, don't <laughs> even. Oh my gosh! Yes. Yeah. You still have that Black Prince sample, right? We didn't finish it because we felt guilty. Where is it? <laughs> Sarah still hasn't tried it yet. She was not a part of our rye night. Oh. Thank goodness. And I was. <laughs> I, I I sat here and drank all these rye. There, there it is. I've been saving it because I don't feel worthy. Yeah. Oh, you're it's totally right. Seriously, like, I'm in the same boat. Like, I don't want to drink it because I think she needs to try it, but it's I'm gonna. so good. Eventually, I'm try it. We've got a million samples over there, and it's only so many hours in a day. <laughs> like, I it's only so many fresh palettes in a day. So, I don't yeah. know where you're coming from because, like, we're I we feel very fortunate to receive samples, mm -hmm. at, and, and it's so awesome. But at some point, like. You know, when like things start to pile up at each other and then I'm like, I forgot what was in the back. Now we need to do inventory. We need a better filing system. I don't know what's going on. I need like a giant room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, how do you organize them? Like, do you organize them by who sent them or do you start sorting them by what they are? Then can you remember who sent them? We so have to like, label everything. Individual. Yeah. All the, all um, yeah. Like downstairs has become a processing center of donations. <laughs> <It's awesome. laughs> like, holy crap. Uh, these ones yeah. were from distillers, and these ones were from our patrons, and these ones were from. Exactly. Oh, Travis, you're the man. Literally, we're about to get more samples. Yes, I love did more you samples. All, Thank uh, you, Travis. Did you all get to try the uh, piggyback rye? We did. We just yeah, we just put out a video on it. Yeah. What'd you think of it? I thought it was uh, it was good, but my God, when you add water, it's like drinking pickle juice. Uh huh. 
I have that is that right was here. one of the biggest transitions for a drop of water. So on our channel, I always put in the drop uh, to see what happens. Um, he takes one for the I team. I take one for the team because they don't want to do it, especially with things like Eagle Rare 17 that I ruined with a friggin' drop of damn water. Um, oh. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not angry anymore about it. Um, I'm not angry anymore. <laughs> uh, but it's... <laughs> The, the drop of water with the piggyback was, it just, it turned it into pickle a juice. freaking jar of pickle juice. It was insane. Insane. I had a, I had a pour of it at OBC and I, I wasn't, what? wasn't much of a fan of it. Without me? Yep. Hmm. Yeah. Right. It's so hard for me to find <laughs> this, this. If you need piggyback, I'll send you a sample of the piggyback. But the other stuff I owe you. You don't owe us any. Yeah, well, it hasn't hit Kentucky yet. It's just a gift. I'll send you some. Thank you. I'll send you some other stuff I've got. I'll tell you about not on here. Oh, Sarah, just, okay. just take the whiskey. Uh, also, I know I you guys going to catalog the, it. <laughs> the New Orleans Bourbon Festival. Ben wants to know what seminar you're looking forward to, and then I guess plug your own seminar too. Oh, us. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I think, and it just came out today, so I'm pretty sure. We're doing the uh, an eleven fifteen seminar on Saturday, in the courtyard. Uh, in the courtyard, which hopefully it's not raining, but in New Orleans in March it shouldn't be. It should be actually pretty nice. Um, awesome. So we're excited about that. Uh, it doesn't say what we're doing yet. I'm not entirely sure what we're doing yet. We've we've got we've, some loose plans. No, we've locked it down, but yeah. I don't know why they didn't decide to release it. So uh, maybe we won't just because of that. Yeah. Know. Well, sure. We know we know what we're doing. We know what we're doing. But um, the seminar I'm most excited for. Brent Elliott's doing like a keynote. He's doing a keynote this um, year, yeah. This year, which I'm really excited about. Uh, and we just bought tickets. Sure. We just bought tickets to his bourbon. They do bourbon dinners on Thursday nights, where oh, a master cool. distiller pair, pairs up with a, a restaurant and they they host a dinner. So we just bought his today. Um, other than that, I, a lot of the ones that they're doing are um, repeats from last year, but I think okay. it's they have so many new people coming and that sure. way they came last year, get to try different ones that yeah. they didn't get to. Even still, Peggy No Stevens does the food and bourbon pairing yeah. seminar that is killer. And uh, Samara Rivers, um, she does bourbon blind date and that was super fun last year. Um, where they kind of do like a twist. It's kind of like a blind flight, but with a twist. Yeah. So. And I think Bobby G... I don't see his this year. I thought he was supposed to be back. He's a cocktail. He's yeah. a mixologist. mixologist. He does. He's like a stand-up comedian who also mixes drinks. That's cool. Nice. Yeah, wow. it's gonna be a good time. Uh, let's see. Now, did you guys see you had thirteenth colonies that you said, Chad? One of the thirteenth yeah. colonies. You know which? You have the bourbon or the rye? We have the small batch bourbon. Okay, we can pour that then. That's next. Well, actually, yeah, it's the one that looks like a birthday bot with a birthday bottle. Which is kind of cool as far as the bottle itself shape goes. Oh, oh look at that. yeah, I've seen that before. So <laughs> it's from, it's from Georgia. Like, like, is it got? No, this doesn't look like a birthday. It's got no balloons. <laughs> <laughs> so again, um, we have to thank. Uh, this is an Adam Nelson sample for uh, that we've also had for quite a while. Not too long, but yeah. Mm. Thanks, Adam. Yes, thank you, Adam. It's not Thirteenth no? Colony Southern. Southern bourbon. Yeah. Is this finished in something yet? Sarah picked up the glass and said, what is this finished in? I don't think anything. It's just a it small batches. That's all it says. Goodness. Goodness. It's from Georgia. Well, there's your problem. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's your problem. <laughs> Straight out of Georgia. So that's all it says in the bottle. I haven't done research on it, but that's all I know. And I had I didn't open it until Chad said that he had it, so I opened it up last night for the first time. So I never had it before last it's, night. It's really sweet smelling. So it's, it's kind of like a, yeah, like a little bit of a. I don't want to say maple. I don't think that's right. I don't know. No maple, maple. Yeah. Um, it's like not fresh bacon, but maybe like bacon bits or bacos or the pieces of bacon that bacos. are all right. I haven't so, heard that. Ever bacon, bacon. Yeah. Put it on salad. I can't believe it's not bacon. I can definitely <laughs> believe it's not bacon. I am <laughs> smelling a maple donut that has bacon <laughs> on it. Wow. Yeah, with like a lemon on the back side of it. That's interesting. 
Yeah, I was thinking like those maple candies. Yeah, exactly. 95 proof. And I get like a little bit of yeah. Maybe Brian said begging strips. Begging strips, yeah. Begging strips. What is like, it? What know, is it? What is dogs. it? I can't read. It's begging. Begging, begging, begging. Begging strips. Begging strips. Begging strips. <laughs> this commercials from the nineties. So good. Whoa. Oh, CGI dog. Matt, did you see Eric's uh, comment there? Send him a sample of the Johnny Walker Rycast. I'll send that to him. Mm. Well, I kind of wish it tasted more like the nose. It's not overtly, um, you know, maple or bacon or lemon. And, it, and the finish kind of just drops off. It's not like... It's just very middle of the road. Yeah, it's yeah. not like much of anything on the flavor. None of the flavors. Yeah, are it's kind of bad. A product of me being yeah. like five pours in, but... Um, you're right. It does kind of just drop off. Hmm. What's the proof? 95. 95? Mm -hmm. Travis says that he went to the still. They're doing really strange things, so it's really funky going on there. Okay, <laughs> Travis. That might explain a little bit of this. Yeah. It smells good, but the taste is just meh. I mean, yeah. it's, it's one not Sarah, all pudding, which is good. It's one that I think Sarah and I often describe as, it's fine. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, fine, it's fine. It's but not like in a fight. Whenever you say it's fine, and it's really not fine, it's just fine. No, it's just fine. I mean, <laughs> it's not objectionable, really. But I, mean, I wouldn't call home about it, right? Exactly. No, but like if someone, if there was like an open bar at a wedding and they were serving this, I would be like, it's it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Then this. Board, it's fine. yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's pleasant. Okay. It doesn't smell like there's a young wood. It doesn't smell like there's a yeah. bone dried or anything like oh. that. There's. It just smelled like it had a finish to it at first. Okay. It goes yeah, I think that like mapley note too. Yeah, lended itself to that. Like I haven't had the Knob Creek maple, but I'm wondering. Oh if God! Finished in oh, Canada. God. You're so <laughs> that that has to be one of the most hated yeah. flavored whiskeys That's ever. Funny. Is not they pretty keep making it and promoting it, it though. So it no, Crown Royal Maple. Oh, that's even worse. I agree. I that thing is even worse. It. My bottle, my brother gave me a bottle of that in 2010. It's still almost full. <laughs> I'm like, it's I, it was a gift. He's like, oh, I got you something. Like, oh, oh, thank you. Good God. Yeah, it's it's in the back of the bar forever. Sort of the same situation to me. Uh, one of my one of my buddies got it as a birthday gift, and he was like, Hey, you like bourbon? You like whiskey? Would you like this? And I tried a little bit. I was like, no, get that away from me. Get that out of my house. <laughs> don't ever show don't put that you know, don't put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> oh yeah. You know what? Like over this past summer, I you know, was in the liquor store a few times, like we are. What? Uh yeah. We're in the liquor store. No, right? I frequent. Uh, and <laughs> the whiskey store. Yeah. <laughs> Multiple times had people come in like in a fran like just so frantic. Oh, for that. And they were like, do, do you have Crown Royal Peach? And the employer, the whoever the employee was, would be like, No, we just sold out and we can't we can't even keep it in. And like they would be pissed and leave the store. And this happened multiple times. And then I eventually was just like, Okay, I gotta get a bottle of this because I want to know what all the fuss is about. Did we ever do that? We didn't. I, I can't find one. Oh yeah. Well, no biggie. You have some? No, no. I'm sorry. I was asking. Yeah. I was answering a, qu a question All from right. Josh in the comments. It's right up there, Josh. Josh, right we're getting. We'll, we will get to. I'm gonna do Koval, and then we'll get to some Iron Root and some other stuff because they haven't had Koval, so I wanted to go oh, over some of the Koval. Yeah. They, they had four different Koval. Right, so I guess we'll start with the two the ones. I think what are these two from eighty? Yeah, two of these are eighty. So, um, I guess let's do the rye first, and then the oat. Okay. All right. And then we can do the bourbon and the four grain. Oh wow! So does does your chat know just how excellent your handwriting is, Matt? Because it, I mean, you could have been a doctor. Oh, it's <laughs> bad. So who, somebody got lucky enough that uh, John uh, Captain Make It Happen was over here. He's he brought his label maker once. I was like, somebody. Got, I think it was uh, uh, Brent from uh, Oak and Smoke and Dan's Dusty Dan. They, they actually got label maker ones. Like the rest of you guys. Sorry. <laughs> handwriting, and I then mean, Jason wrote the ones out for um, the I bourbon junkies, 
And he wrote some little fun notes. They haven't opened them yet because we're going to do a scotch live with them. And there's all sorts of little fun notes about the derogatory comments towards both of them written on their samples. Nice. But, nice. Do, you, do you wait until you put the sticker on the bottle before you write it? No, the sad part is I write it on the counter. Ah. I am very yeah. bad at writing. Matt pours all of mine, and then I go over and actually write the label so that I can <laughs> oh, no. forbid me from labeling their things anymore. Lines Thanks. bottles up with little minis in front of them. <laughs> That's what I did last night. I poured, I think, all, all of them last night, so when Will got here, he could label them all. Are, it's amazing are you that you poured them. Do huh? I am? Are you left-handed? No, I'm right-handed. No, he's just being scratched. I'm just really bad at writing. In some of the angles were suggesting that you might be left-handed. Uh, no, also, don't, when I probably filled some of yours, I probably I was mean, doing like two in the morning and drinking along the way. So they probably get worse as the as the yeah. filling goes along. Because I'm like, oh, I've had this one in a long time. I've had this one in a long time. Don't let him fool you. Like. All the time. Yeah. It's, that's what always goes. Shows. I'm a handwriting expert. That's true. It's like you go looking at go looking for whiskey. Yeah. Like, oh, I found this one and this one. <laughs> it's Man, always, that is perfumey <laughs> and and citrus. There's a lot of acid in this. Ooh, you're not wrong about that. Mm. Lime zest, right? Like, I forgot. Yeah, it does. yeah. It's got a little yeah. bit of effervescence yeah. to the smell too. Wow, the champagne kind of quality. Yep. Yeah. That is like. Um, Wow. <laughs> it's perfumey. I mean, it's just very perfumey. You, you said the other day, I forget what it was. Might have been the Walking Dead whiskey. I can't remember, but it was those, um, oh, those little things that you, that's in like the little potpourri clamshell uh, uh, on the back of a toilet at a, at a grandma's house or something. Potpourri. I, well, yeah, but you, I don't know. I called it something else. You spun a yarn about it. I don't remember. But, uh, yeah, they're talking it. about the flower the things that come in the disc. Yeah, spray with perfume and put it in a shell. <laughs> yeah, in a shell, but it's got to be in a shell or something because you've got a shell. In the bathroom. Yes. Everyone had a beach themed bathroom at one point. Yes. <laughs> Some people still no, do. no. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Robot Scott wanted to know because you guys try to know the Juntos from Balcones at the Bastards Ball. We did. did you guys give me a ball or anything, right? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'll send you a sample of that too. Yeah, it was good. We liked it, it. Was really good. I just loved how <laughs> Sarah oh. said she went up to the guy and said, I think it's the Juntos, and he was like, I don't know what that is. And I was like, I'm pronouncing it wrong. I don't know. And he was like, Oh, you mean Juntos? Like, <laughs> it was obvious. I think I said Jun Juntos. Yeah, you said Juntos. And he was like, Oh, you mean the Juntos? And I was like, No, you yeah. said like. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't know. I was also maybe a little bit. <laughs> and he was like, That's close enough. He shut me down. <laughs> I didn't. It's just not kind. Just give me the damn whiskey. Come no. on. He served me. Well, I'm glad he at least told me how to properly say it, so I could, you know, speak yeah. about it. Yeah. Intelligently. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I have a complex now. It's not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess we can move to the oat. Yeah, I I like the uh, flavors better on this one than the nose. I'm not a fan of the nose. On yeah, this the one. nose is kind of funky. It's very funky. It actually doesn't taste as bad as it smells. If that makes any sense. Like I think this the nose is a little bit more threatening <laughs> to me. Um, yeah, I like cobalt. It's actually, pretty pretty mild. Uh, unfortunately, the one I I'll send you this one is I did because I didn't have it at the time when I sent that original package. There's a special blend they made that comes in at fifty percent. That's really good. I'll send you some of that too. That's a newer one. Okay. So this is the oat. So this is one hundred percent oat. One hundred percent oat. Wow. Yes. So and you know, of course these are all um, single barrels as well, mm. and they're oat and they're all you know organic and all that fun stuff out of oh, Chicago. Oh. So this is a definitely different one. Mm. Oh, that nose is different. Yeah, I've never smelled anything quite like it. Since it's oat. I mean, I, I could tell that they're related. Yeah. They had a similar quality. Huh. I don't think it's I would like swear overly oaty, though. It kind of like has a cereal smell. Yeah. Overly oaty. Overly oaty. I mean, what is this classified as? Just a whiskey? Is this a, a bourbon or a rye? It can, no, no. It's 100% it's it's oh, just oh, oh, whiskey. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Own, own classification? I would assume just a, a whiskey. 
Yeah, yeah. it's a yeah. single, single, barrel, guess, a single barrel whiskey with oak below it. So I would guess just right. yeah, it's just a whiskey as far as TTB goes. I don't think there's an oak category that I'm aware of. Yeah. A lot more light and friendly on yeah, the palate than uh, yeah. than the first. When it hits your palate, you think it's going to be really big, and then it just kind of mellows down to almost nothing. It's true. And it fades into just. It's hay? kind of like hay. Hey. Yeah. 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 But yeah, no, bit, I know what you're saying. A little bit fruity in the middle there, but then it just it got it has that dried hay finish. Mm. So I'm getting like a uh, an an oak brand cereal. And you drink the milk after the cereal, but they put. There you, go. you know what it tastes like? That crackling oat brown. You ever had that one with the, that comes in like the little oval shaped? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's a lot like that. Yep. 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 But you're. But I don't feel like it's super oaty in the way that you were saying, like the milk that it leaves behind. <laughs> yeah, but then you got to add in the alcohol. Yeah, right. <laughs> or it you're cancels it. Eating breakfast. Sure. So the real goal is to try this with the actual cereal and see if it's any good. We've had a lot of drunk breakfast. So it's a breakfast whiskey. It's a breakfast, it's a breakfast whiskey. whiskey. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Definitely bre yeah. breakfast whiskey. I can go for that. Pairs well with whatever those oat oats I mean, are that you were talking about. You Instead go. of being basic and the having oats, Walmart brand. Toastios. <laughs> Toastios. 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 Yeah, you have this. <laughs> Toastios. You guys are funny. I like it. Mm hmm. It's, it's, good, though. it's just really different. Yeah, it's we'll it's do the tasting. And we'll do this with those. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, Cheerios, like straight Cheerios, not the honey nut. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I went to a tasting at one of my friends' house, and like there are a lot of newer uh, whiskey drinkers there, and they like went to almost an entire bottle of this oat whiskey. Really? Like their number one favorite. It's super mild, no, so I could see maybe where that comes it's from. It's so mild on the palate. Like, mm. it, didn't, oh. it didn't have any sort of 40% proof spike at all. Like more like an Irish whiskey is just down like nothing. Yeah. That's dangerous. Yep. Bye, Brian. Have a good night. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sending you guys the oat whiskey from uh Woodford. Oh, uh, okay. Well, it's oat, it's oat, it's bourbon, but it has oat in it as one of the grains. So I'm okay. interested in your thoughts on it. So, okay, so this is their bourbon. This is now this jumps up to 47 percent, so 94. And uh, this one also is single, but the cool thing about this one it's 51 corn, 49 percent spelt. What, yeah, so it's a weird, interesting, spelt? so it's like yeah. a tiny bottle down, tiny bottle down. <laughs> I think this is like the third time we've done this. Uh, it's it's raining, tiny man, yeah, tiny there you go. <laughs> Tiny Elvis? Tiny Man, that's a politically correct way of saying it. It's raining hobbits. It's raining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think of all the YouTube channels, we're probably all the all of ours are probably the shortest <laughs> by far. <laughs> yeah, I'm like five foot even, so I'm like the hobbits is of hobbits. hobbits yeah. is so Funny, they make fun of Daniel for being short and the vault's like he's not short. <laughs> I was like, he's, he's not, not short. short. He's not yeah. old. Oh, he's not short. It's like, yeah, we're really way shorter than Daniel, so not true at all. I'm like, I'm five. Oh, I'm average height. Yeah, our kid has Shout no chance. When he like randomly knows the heights of celebrities, we'll just be watching a show and he'll be like, yeah, he's five seven. I'm like, how do you know that? And I Google it, and it's true. I'm like, how it's do you know these things. I don't know. I don't know how. Just random talent. Weird height encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. Oh, They're so Jason says, well. yeah, Matthew, Jason says that the spelt is a subspecies of wheat, apparently. Hobbits is. You Ask said your wheat, question, right? Wheat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wheat. Uh, what? Don't Single barrel? I'm yes. kidding. I don't get it. No, it's okay. Yeah. Someone else had to have heard it out there. I didn't hear what happened. <laughs> I misheard what he said. I'm totally watching the playback. Yeah, it's funny. Jason Boosie says he's taller than all of us combined. This is certainly a chance. He's a tall fellow. This is like with really some, sweet, but with some odd flavor going on. I guess the sweetness is obviously the wheat, but... Right. Actually, it's the lack of rye. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> it's the lack of that letting the corn come mm. through more. 
for all this <laughs> has spelt, <sighs> which is a subcategory of wheat. So wheat's pretty darn sweet. Yeah. I don't know if it's sweeter than it. I have to be one of those you get to compare. I, think uh, I like it though. I like dough better. Yeah. It's very different. Dough better too. Did not think that I'd say that. All right. So the four grain is really kind of neat. So this one is oat, malted barley, rye, and wheat. No corn. No corn. Which is the weirdest four grain ever. It's like, there's no corn in it. I'm like, okay. They used four whole grains and they left out corn? Yeah, corn's not one of them. Seems like they went out of their way to leave out corn. Yeah. Yeah, like th this distillery clearly is known for all their weird crap they do. They just go find weird grains and make them all, so. Okay. I see you, Kobo. Okay. Thank you. That'll do you. <laughs> oh, back to that. I mean, it's not as perfumey as which one's this? The rye. This is the, the four, four grain. The four, no corn grain. Yeah. So what are the four grains? Dude, like, I smell the rye one. popping out of there. Yeah. So oat, malted barley, rye, and wheat. Oh, okay. I get the rye. I'm with you, Chad. I, I get the rye. Perfumey rye. That first one we we smelled. That's what this smells the most like. You know, I get the rye in the back of the nose. I get yeah. the sweetness from the wheat in the front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Uh oh. You know know. One. Uh oh. Well, that's an echo. It's got an echo. <laughs> You're echoing. No. Just me though, not you. Oh, it's got kind of a funk on the end. Yeah, there's a there's a young barrel note to that. Kind oh, of a young like leather, it. almost. A... It's it's weird and funky, which is probably why I like it. <laughs> yeah, you do like funky things. I do like the weird crap, which is not. You're just reclaiming McGregor. Ugh. Ugh, that's just horrible. <laughs> oh god, that just makes me cringe. Wait, what? Clay Clay, have you tried Clay McGregor the proper twelve? Oh no, we can't. Don't do it. it. It's horrible. Oh, let him really? send you some. <laughs> I'll send it to him if you want to try it. Well, it's because of him. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think we can find it. Yeah, it's, it's, it smells it? like a Sharpie. Oh, well, now I'm intrigued. Oh, I'll send you some then. I kind of want to uncork it. Just Is there like a fight night coming up? I want to do it. Yeah, we just missed just one the other um, night. We did. I don't watch that. I'm not a fan of that one now. Yeah. Just because I'm interested and I know like when it first came out, people were getting like huge hits off of having like reviewed that. Oh yeah, it was crazy. Hits. Yeah. Yeah, I think Bill got like seven hundred thousand or something insane. Oh, yeah. That was his yeah, his big video. Yep. So I, I wanna know what all the hype is about or isn't about. It's because you know oh, yeah. McGregor made it and it's just God awful. Oh, uh, Jason said he's sending us the Jephtha. Yes, I want to try the Jephtha. Oh. If you guys have Jephtha, is it bad? Huh? Or is it the Jephtha Creed? How is that one? Who are you talking to? <clears throat> Chad and Sarah. They're ignoring the question. Um, I think. So, what are we trying next? <laughs> <laughs> Get off this shit. Yeah, we're going on to well, okay. So to be fair, we've had their we've tried it at six months and I think two years, and yeah. our verdict was it needs more time. Okay. Like, That's fair. But they're I mean, the thing is though, I'm very torn because um we know uh the master distiller, they're amazing. Um mm -hmm. the distillery is awesome, the grounds are killer like they do a lot they of really cool any of those things into the taste of the whiskey no they don't go into the whiskey right um <laughs> so yeah so we're waiting for something older to come out okay that's very fair yeah okay so you guys We've recorded a couple of episodes that i don't want to release because of the same reasons i like the people right and yeah. i really i, I, I think it has promising you know potential but exactly. I don't want to say what I what I really feel. We will just talk about the tour and not about the other things. Right. It's the fun. things people are saying in the chat about it are wonderful. Yes. I'm Rancid sure. rotting eggs. Hmm. 
Oh, that's wonderful, guys. That's All right, you guys want to do Crowded Barrel 1862 and then do some Iron Real Roots? Real bubble bubblegum? Well, we're probably in our in our home stretch. Okay. Yeah. Let's do Iron Roots. Let's, which I'm Iron Roots do you not have? Or <laughs> Craig's just an hour ahead, from behind, or ahead of us. Yeah. Which, which Iron Roots have you not had? Very special. It is 45 minutes past my bedtime. <laughs> what Iron Roots have you Thank had you, slash not had? <laughs> Any of the any of the iron root samples have you not had? Um, let's see. We have the. Oh, do we have any that we haven't had? Har Harbinger. <laughs> so I think we've tried all these. Yeah, the Icarus. Okay, you've had them all. Okay. Um, yeah, Icarus. I don't think that there's one of those that we don't have open. Okay, Lithian. We can still talk about them because they're great. It's true. We yeah. can. Mm -hmm. I think we should. I think we should because we know that no matter what, we're going to finish on good whiskey then. That's fair. Dealer's choice. Um, what about hubris? Because I haven't had it in a while. I pulled and, out hubris first. Oh. Good corn whiskey. Since, it did, since they did win, you know, corn whiskey uh, in the world, then they just won best bourbon in the world for their Harbinger. So. Mm -hmm. By whom? Uh, was it World of Whiskeys? I think you know how. I mean, obviously, obviously, we both know they make really good whiskey, but it's all subjective. I mean, there's a bazillion awards now. It's like this person, sure. it's like whatever. Yeah, everybody. I, mean, everybody I love it. And they gold something for something. Exactly. Yeah. It's just like San Francisco. Well, everybody. Then you come to find out. Well, there's lots of double golds. So I'm like, so this doesn't mean anything then. And then, yeah. like, yeah. just having worked on. Um, for different companies applying for awards that aren't, it's outside of whiskey. Um, mm. But knowing like to apply for the award, you have to submit a, you know, entry and also $1,000, um, mm. which so, and then you get something, right? You get ranked yeah. somehow. So you basically are buying an award without buying an award and knowing that that stuff goes on makes me trust things less. Um, yeah. I'm not saying that's exactly what happens. It just. I was on a, um, Ish. wine panel judging wines uh, in the same kind of sense, right? These people had sent in their wines. They had sent in two bottles of their wine plus an entry fee. Mm -hmm. Get in and our choices are no medal, silver medal, gold medal, or double gold. Right. Right? Like that's that's not really a choice, right? Like basically everybody gets silver because you don't want to be the jackass that's being like, no, I'm sorry, no medal for you. Oh right. So it's like the adult version of every kid gets a trophy. It Yeah. Except for the one kid who only came to like two games, then you don't get one. They should award. I think <laughs> everyone else who paid for your kid to be here, you get a trophy. I think after day two, there were 72 double golds. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, granted, it was a bunch of different wines, and we have a bunch of different categories in wine, right? right. Like, blends, you know, specific types of blends, oh, wow. specific types of single grapes, and, you know, things like that. But, I mean, yeah. still, like, it's come on. How many wines did you taste in, in how many grapes? I mean, we tasted um, 317, 320, something like that, in, in two days. That is impressive. It's but a lot I mean, of spitting. It's not the same. Yeah, it's yeah. different. Um, How is your palate not that, completely blown, even though you're spitting with that many wines? It seems I, came did, I came on and did a live after the first one. <laughs> That's even better. That's the spirit. I drink for a living. living this is what I do. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I, I taste wine for a living, so I've gotten pretty good at it. Oh, yeah. I do want to say hi to Rare Bird 101. Thanks for coming in. Really hi, appreciate it. Bird. This one's got a lot. Yeah, this this is more my, my wheelhouse of love. Toasty butterscotch. Mm -hmm. mm. So this one's 117.8 proof. This is the yeah. okay. Should we get the same one then? Okay, awesome. 2019 edition, 29 yeah. months. It's exactly the same one we have then. Perfect. Yeah, I do love it. Now, do you guys like Icarus that's finished in the port and Isla casts or no? Um, if I remember correctly, I think we did these on a live. If I remember right, I think that we put the Icarus last. Okay, not which is not surprising based on you guys. We did, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, mean, I thought it was one of those we were like, oh, we don't like this one. I think we were just like, this is just the one that's the least our we sure. flavor profile. Four, yeah, yeah. Which you guys, you guys got to get down here to come to Denison and go to Iron Root. We would love to go to Iron yeah, Root. We need to do that. Yeah, 
cat. Please. He caught it. I really like the best place to go hang out. It's the most fun barrel warehouse to go with because they have all these experiments going on in there. It's just so much fun to play in there. Yeah. It's like and a dope playground in the bear in the barrel house. So the way that we got these was actually um the mom and her oh, Marcia sent it to you. Marcia, Marcia. Yeah. We saw her at I ran into her at um the Bourbon Women's Symposium mm -hmm. in Louisville, and she was like, Oh, I'm where are you going for your next seminar? I have samples for you. And I'm thinking like she has samples, right? right? And she comes with this big bag full of these. And she's like, yeah. I don't want to take these home. I think you guys should benefit from this. We were like, wow, <laughs> thanks. We just met you. You're awesome. Yeah, she is yeah. awesome. I love her. She's she great. Is the best. She is the patriarch of that family mm -hmm. by, yeah. Well, not she's, she's the family. I'd say she's really the patriarch of all Texas whiskey, to be real. Oh, yeah. That's um, weird. And That's she can drink, man. She, she can drink. drink all of us under the table, no problem. Nice. We had her on a ladies' night. Guarantee it. Last year sometime. And, yeah, she was keeping up with us. And we are just drinking, drinking, drinking. She's <laughs> she's good people. Uh, I yeah. love that at the uh, Iron Root um, barrel pick that we did the day before at the Bastard Ball, there was that um, temporary tattoo of her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, that was great. <laughs> I've forgotten that the Icarus was in Port and Pete Cat. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thirty-nine months ago. You can pour it again if you want. I'm not. I'm not opposed. That's it. I like ending here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's there or maybe a harbinger. Fine. It's always good. But you know, harbinger is fine. The Icarus is that what we're talking about? No. Yeah, we'll do Harbinger, they said, which worked fine. I don't want Icarus. I'm going to pour Icarus. That's fine. <laughs> well, well, Harbinger. Harbinger is the one that won bourbon, best bourbon in the world. Here it is from the world. Of All Facebook. right, I guess that is a strong note to end on. Yeah, it's a good one to end on. I'll allow it. Where's that one? I, I could pour the i -Core. Hmm. Yeah, the i -Core is actually the one that we don't have. I have yours. It's, I, it's part of the thing, one of the things I owe you. Are you have a list? <laughs> oh, from the is it? How the, will you ever remember? I have a list. Trust me, I owe lots of people things. I like like Christmas was crazy. My sister was here for three weeks from Alaska, so nothing got accomplished during Christmas time whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And then, oh. as an accountant, this is like my total insane How time. So, of course, insanely good. In no way was that a judgment. I'm just seriously impressed at how we like managed all of the, like comings and goings of samples. Oh yeah. It, it's all in my head. Like I know exactly why I owe everyone. I think that's the accounting side of you then coming through with the like. Although it's all in my head, and none of it's actually like written down anywhere. I just know what I owe everyone. Yeah, hmm. I I need that part of my brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it's the anal retentive. Uh, I count everything as an accountant, so everything has a thing. Uh, Minot Drocks, no, sorry, we're not doing Wyoming whiskey tonight. That would have been a good. One. Do you guys? You guys had Wyoming before? We have yeah. had it. We might have a we, bottle. We do have a bottle. But I don't okay. even know where it is right now. I don't think it's open. It's so I've had some weird experiences. With, like, my favorite Wyoming was actually the one that the uh, Crowded Barrel did. Their yes. release was mm. by far superior. Oh, that was good. Yeah. I actually had a bad <laughs> bottle, apparently, from them. So I was like, oh, why do they like this so much? This one sucks. And then John came over. He's like, that's because it's, it's bad. He came and tasted it. Like, I'll bring you a real bottle. This is wrong. I'm like, oh, okay. And Rob's like, oh, Way better. I'm like, okay, now I get why they like it. <laughs> so bottle consistency was definitely a problem. Hmm. Yeah, that's gotta be tough. Oh, there's uh, Alan. Good to see you, Alan. I guess that's why the big distilleries have labs with you know 90 different samples of what's going in and at, at any time just to be able to keep that consistency, keep your food. Oh, yeah. They have a team of tasters. That's insane to me. I would I like to be on that team. Oh, I, I, on that team. Well, I, think, they, I think they spit. I have I'll, be I'll be on that team. Yep. Like, how do I get recruited for that? So this is the uh, 2019 B. <laughs> Sarah, I'm hoping you start a YouTube channel uh, and get really good at tasting whiskeys and, and giving descriptors. And then someone <laughs> will be like, oh, I'm going to pick you for our kickball team. That's, yeah. that, that, that's kind of what I'm hoping. It's yeah. my dream that Brent Elliott's like, you know what? Just come on. I go. <laughs> or that Peggy Note will be like, you know what? I'm a master taster. I'm going to teach you. I will gift you this knowledge. I'll mm, yeah, really. Please, please give me. <laughs> I watched that show. I can dream. 
Yeah, Eric uh, Evanson wants to know, have you guys tried the Balcones rye? Mm -hmm. the rye? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I'll send that too. Really? I don't think so. I, was gonna yeah, another, I guess there's going to be another big box. Yeah, I can get behind that one too. It's a chocolatey. I'll well, certainly do both, the regular one and the cash strength on that one. Mm. And cash strength is the story only release, but I'll get you that one too. Yeah, this is good. I like Harbinger a lot. Mm -hmm. I love Harbinger. I like this a lot. I'm a huge fan. I like Iron Man. So yeah. speaking of that, so I talked to Robert the other day. The first 75 of the YouTube barrel pick is bottled. But since we had a bunch of more response, we need to he's gonna have to bottle like at least another 25 or 30 more. And oh. he's still gonna go back in the bottle that and then we'll see what else is left. And then so I've got to list everybody's names who's got a bottle if everybody requested one. Did we not, you responded. I know we requested. I didn't know if money has exchanged hands or not. I'm like, no, we haven't done that part yet. I don't have this part of my no. I also know that part that everyone owes money. Good, good, good. Okay. Yeah. okay. No, we haven't done that part yet because they're not ready yet. But yeah, certain enough. The only thing is they won't be in these bottles. They'll be in the like the wine shape bottles because apparently they're out of these bottles. And Robert said they're like backwatered like some crazy amount of time. They said, screw it, it's not worth it. Just use the regular wine bottle shape now. Yep. Huh. I don't blame him. I don't blame him either. I mean, like, the bottle's the bottle, right? People want what's inside. I just want the juice inside. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I mean, well, it's going to maintain consistency great, but otherwise, I just want what's in there. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Do you think people would buy Blanton's if it was in a wine bottle? Well, I think that's no. different because I think Blanton's literally built their, I would call it, like, infamy based on their bottle the shape bottle. being the, the first, right? They were doing something that no one else had ever done, which basically the whole marketing thing with the bottle, but then also the first single barrel. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So funny. I read an article about them today about how ja how the Japanese saved the bourbon industry. Yeah. Yeah. On my phone, I was like, that was a really cool article. I would like to read that. Yeah. I'll find it. I'll, I'll text it to you. Thank you. He's going to be sending you all kinds we'll, of stuff. We'll send you that with the samples. All right. <laughs> okay, send me that cat, too. <laughs> Say the cat. Yeah. The cat. No, the cat stay with us. The no. That's my kid, cat. We can't give him up. <laughs> Does your cat hate Monday? No, he no. He hates every other day of the week. <laughs> what do Does he hate Mondays? That's what. And love lasagna. Oh, cause no. I'm with you, Chad. No, he's a Weasley. He's not a Garfield. They're oh, named after okay. Harry Potter, and there's Luna, and the other one is don't tell Harry. Harry? Yep. Yeah. Very Weasley and Luna. But if you introduce me to someone at an event, I won't remember their name, but I'll remember your three cats' names. Because <laughs> it's Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, I, how does my brain work that way? <laughs> I'm slightly obsessed. I love oh, I the know. Know. I brand new tattoo. Yeah, I was like, let me take a picture of your tattoo. My friend loves Harry Potter. Sam well, I just got this one on Friday, so. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. Lightly obsessed. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and sign off. It's getting yep. late, guys. All right. So I guess if you guys want to plug your stuff, obviously I think pretty much all of you know that you guys are awesome and have an awesome channel, but go ahead and do it just in case someone doesn't miraculously know about you guys. <laughs> well, thanks. Sure. We're uh, youtube.com slash it's bourbonite. That's where we can be found on uh, Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. It's uh, bourbonite. It's bourbonite. Uh, we have a, uh, a merch site. It's called Whiskey Ambitions. We just launched... This T-shirt, the Drink More Bourbon uh, T-shirt, is on there now, as well as these Glen Cairns and lots of other all that jazz. Stuff. That's whiskeyambitions.com. Yeah. Although if you that Google, Google Bourbon, 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 that's right. Bourbonite.com will take you there. Uh, yeah. And then we have our Patreon page. It's patreoncom slash it's Bourbonite. Yep, and that's it for us. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys still have the shirt available or not, but I love this shirt. We do. We do. Yeah, that's yeah. that. I love that shirt. I think we're gonna maybe next step is a hoodie. Yeah. Ooh, for I like us that. up here, it'll still be cold in the May. For you guys, I don't <laughs> even know. sweatshirts without the hood's good too. I like both. All right, sure. all right. Sure. I'll keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. I like the color. Yeah, I do too. Mm. The maroon color is really nice, Chad. Sarah, thank you. Good job, Chad. You fixed that. I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and then for us, we got uh, two scotches this week. We've got coming out the uh, Kirkland Twenty Year Space Side, and then tomorrow the Old Pulteney Thirteen Year. A spirits uh, single barrel, mm -hmm. and it's freaking okay. awesome. So, all that's what's coming up, and so I guess we'll see everybody next week. And Chad and Sarah, thank you much for being on with us, and really appreciate it. We'll see everybody next week. Cheers! Thank you all. Thanks for having Cheers. us. Cheers. Don't leave us. <laughs>